Hello everyone and welcome back to One Soccer. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming, and I am joined as always by my colleague Alex Gonge Ruzik. And Alex, today we are going to talk about what could be the most unprecedented summer transfer window for Canadian national team players because it could be the biggest one in the history as three of the biggest names of Canadian football are linked to some massive clubs. So Alex, let's kick things off with Alfonso Davies and some of the rumors that are going around with him because I've read some reports and I've had some sources tell me that Bayern want to build around Davies going forward. They want to lock him down to a contract until 2028 and he wants to be one of the faces along with Jamal Musiala. So the fact that these kind of reports are going out right now that there's interest elsewhere, specifically around Manchester City and Real Madrid, has you and I here today to talk about what is potentially best for Davies and if we actually think they're going to happen. So let's first start off with a lot considered to be the biggest club in the world. Sorry if I took a shot at anybody else's, but let's start off with Real Madrid. And if Davies does end up getting a transfer this summer, do you like the destination of Real Madrid? Yeah, I mean, in terms of natural out and out fit Real Madrid's made a sense a lot of sense for a while now there's just that that sort of there's a vacancy at left back so to speak I mean Ferlin Mendy's been good there but you know he hasn't always been relied upon uh you know injuries uh etc cetera, etc cetera. you know I think Real Madrid's really wanting to to build something like you know maybe what was there before with Marcello at that left back position that sort of flair that sort of fun that sort of you know, just good vibes on the ball, and Alfonso Davies certainly could provide that. There's the fact that Vinicius Jr. is also on the left, so that's also just a tasty duo to think of. And the two get along well. You know, they they linked up in Miami last year, and you know shows that okay, there's a bit could be a bit of a partnership brewing there. That makes it makes sense on a lot of footballing perspectives, and then of course just marketing. I mean, you know, Los Blancos they want their Galacticos. It's not the same Galactico era as before. They do have been targeting more of the younger stars on the up and up now, and less just these stars at the top of their game. But in a sense, that's Alfonso Davies. He's just 22. You know, he's someone that's very much still got a lot of growing to do. He could be one of those players in the mold of this younger generation, like your Aurelien Chumainis, your Eduardo Camavingas, your Vinicius Juniors, and all these younger stars, your Rodrigos that Real Madrid's been building about. So in terms of, you know, those two factors, which so- soccer and marketing, Real Madrid does tick a lot of boxes. Yeah, 100%. And... Uh... And honestly, like Florian Plettenberg is one who broke this news and it, it got a lot of us thinking because these are some big clubs like Real Madrid and Manchester City are massive. And talking about Real Madrid and, you know, the success they've had in the Champions League and just kind of when you picture a club to go to and, and if you're a star like Alfonso Davies, I don't know if I could think of one better. And I, and I went to Twitter and I know it's, you know, it's Twitter, but I did ask the question, if, you, if Davies was to leave, where would you like to see him go? And a lot said Real Madrid just because it is a, a club of that caliber. And on top of it, we've seen a, a bit of a similar story with someone like David Alaba. Now, Alfonso Davies is obviously a lot younger. And when I've had a couple conversations around Davies' future, they said, well, maybe take a look at Alaba's path. The way that he started at Bayern, he grew, he developed, and he got to an age where Bayern were kind of happy to, you know, to have the cycle finish and he moved on. So that's where the question kind of comes in my mind. It's like, I think that Bayern probably want to keep Davies for the foreseeable future, maybe until he's in that late 20s and then make a, a leap to Real Madrid. But at the age of 21, and with his contract expiring in 2025, it opens these type of doors. And I mean, Real Madrid is just, it's just a very intriguing destination. But on the flip side of that, you have a place like Manchester City who have a ton of money. Now there are some, you know, issues maybe going over the club's head right now, but you have a manager like Pep Guardiola. You have a system that's almost so complicated. I'm not even gonna try to explain what Guardiola does, but I mean, Alex will get into that a little bit. I mean, on paper, it kind of looks like that three, two, four, one. You have a right back of John Stones who likes to go into the midfield, but then can drop back. You have Nathan Aki, who's kind of like goes out to left back, but into outside left center back. It's a very complicated system. But if Davies were to go there and you saw the success of like a Cancelo actually had, how do you see him fitting in Pep Guardiola, maybe molding Davies to kind of fit this club going forward? Yeah, I mean, the Manchester City fit, it's less, you know, black and white, say, than Real Madrid, where you kind of look at that left back spot. It's going to be something new, but that's also why this move's so interesting. Because I think, especially assuming Pep Guardiola stays around, which isn't always so sure, you know, there's always rumors swirling around. But with Pep Guardiola, he sees the game in a very specific way. And it's just fascinating to see where he's slotted certain players in. All of a sudden, now a guy like. John Stones is a fullback. You know, someone like Nathan Ake is a fullback. Uh, you got guys like Cancelo. He turned into an inverted fullback who's basically a midfielder. 
Uh, you know, there, there's these all sorts of positional shifts. So for Davies, it can mean a new role of some sorts. He could very well become a more of an inverted fullback. We've seen him sort of develop those sides of his game and, and with Bayern. He, he steps in the mid middle a lot more. He tries to play one twos. He plays like a auxiliary midfielder at times. Um, the only reason he he still pushes out wide is because he has that speed. He loves to use it. But, you know, someone like Pep, he could have seen that be like, okay, there's maybe a midfielder growing there and, and could want to push him to do that more often. Or he could, you know, look at, oh, I like the way he cuts inside, has that left foot. Maybe I could put him on the right side and he becomes more of a, a right midfielder that cuts inside and opens up space out wide. Or, you know, he could just straight up put him on the left and be like, okay, do your thing, run at guys, you know, create chaos from for the team to be able to hold more possession in the midfield. And I think, it's harder to project what he'd exactly become at Manchester City, but that's why the move's so exciting. Because I think we've seen so many tactically versatile players like Davies go to a club like City and just, you know, reinvent themselves, which is always something interesting to imagine. It could have big benefits for Canada because if Davies is turning into a midfielder, if Davies is turning into, you know, more of an attacking winger, that could have more benefits for, for where he fits in with Canada, whereas you're not looking at be like, well, his best position's on, you know, at wing back and you're trying to build the system around that. So there, there are those added possibilities with the, with a move like this. Yeah, and with Bayern, though, when I just think of the word longevity because when you see players come at Bayern, they stay for such long times. Thomas Miller, um, I mean, I think Kimmich will be there for a long time. David Alba was there. Phil Lama, I mean, I can go on and on and on. And I assume that Davies would kind of fall into that category and he would just do that natural cycle like I mentioned. So the fact that this summer could be so big and, I mean, it's crazy that Davies is so young because I picture him playing for Bayern for like five, five years or so because he's he just he's, he broke out so young. So it's just in the back of my mind. I'm just thinking, is it time to maybe shake things up? It's not like this has been gone smooth this season for Bayern. I mean, for Davies, at one point he was playing some of the best football, and all of a sudden, in a matter of weeks, it all got blown up. And Bayern don't usually make those kind of managerial mistakes to to spend that kind of money on an Augsman to get rid of him to bring in Tuchel, and then the team kind of fell apart. So I'm very curious, Alex, but just. For the viewers out there and let us know down in the comments i'm gonna ask you a simple question do you want to see davies move this summer um and if so where do you want to see him either resign with Bayern to 2028 or so or sign for city or real madrid and why alex yeah that's a good question and i think it's something where it, it, it ultimately depends on a lot of factors because i agree i think it would be nice to see alfonso davies become a Bayern legend i think that was kind of felt like maybe at least two or three years ago that felt like it was always the plan like he was developing uh, a lot and he still is developing a lot but i just mean you could tell Bayern was really pushing and he was part of this youth movement but you just look at how much has changed in the you know past few years for Bayern off on and off the field there seems just to be so much more drama less stability than we're used to seeing all these new coaches cycling in and out uh, you know and it feels just like it isn't the same Bayern of four to five years ago where there's this plan of looking at guys and be like we want to keep you around and especially when you look at Alfonso Davies's contract situation where if he has two years left and at his age he is someone on the squad that can attract a very big fee and you know I think Alfonso Davies and his team they aren't dumb we know that they're very smart when it comes to marketing Davies and on TikTok on social media uh, just making sure that he's as marketable as possible they'll be looking at this big look we have all the leverage here if we don't want to re-sign two years left that gives you know Davies would enter a free agency at 24 in his prime of his career he's someone who could go to pick pick you know pick your club basically if that ends up happening Byron would be sitting there be like oh shoot if something doesn't move we could have to to, to make a move now to maximize the the money we could get so because of that and just the un instability around Byron if I was going to look at it be like okay I could see maybe a Real Madrid swooping in because of all of those factors uh, Manchester City I just think that's one where uh, I'd love to see it from a personal standpoint. I just haven't felt that the, there's just so much clutter there, so to speak, in terms of the players. You know, not saying Man Manchester obviously a great team. So I'm going to say Real Madrid uh, is a very strong possibility this summer because of all that happens. I think if Davies uh, doesn't end up re-signing this summer, I think this is something where it becomes a very tangible, uh, you know, something that could happen. Yeah, I personally think though this is kind of all smoke and you know I, I think he will stay at Bayern but if he does move I, I agree I think Real Madrid it's just the club itself the the positioning the, the fact that it's a 4-3-3 got that opportunity to play at left back I just think it would be 
an easier fit. But on the flip side, you know, you get to play with Pep Guardiola. So I don't think there's a ton of wrong answers between the three, but I do think he will stay at Bayern in the end. But now let's move on to Jonathan David, a story that I have been following for years. I'm sure that you have an every Canadian because the man has just found so much success in Liga, and I think it's finally time for one of the big clubs around the world. We had Fabrizio Romano tweet out that a lot of top clubs are looking at him. Uh, so we don't we didn't get any actual names, but Florian Plessenberg went out there and dropped Bayern, said that they're monitoring him, that they like what they see, but Thomas Tuchel will decide on summer transfer targets in the next few weeks. So we have to see if, you know, that Davies-David combination could actually happen at Bayern. Maybe if David comes in, that changes what Davies potentially wants to do. I don't know. But the fact that it's almost, to me, it almost looks for sure that he's going to leave. And Lille are planning to for next season without him already as they're targeting players like Florian Balogun. So the first club that has been somewhat linked to him um, through flow was uh, Bayern. So let's talk about Bayern. Again, the 4 2 3 one system under Thomas Tuchel next season. There's there's a natural opening at, at that striker. You have someone like Alfonso Davies. You would make every Canadian out there absolutely lose their mind to see these two playing together at a club like Bayern. So Alex, what do you think about that link? And it's not the first time we've heard David to Bayern. Yeah, and I think it's something that I've liked a lot. I think it's something that would make a lot of sense because Bayern, a lot of pieces there, but you know they're lacking a little depth at the number nine. Really, other than Matisse Tell, they don't have a natural number nine. And obviously, Matisse Tell, super young and you know great prospect, but maybe not as much of a finished product yet. It's something where if they can get a number nine, I feel like it could be a whole different story in terms of next year, especially if you maybe retain Alfonso Davies on a new contract. You know, you, you, you clean up some of the what's going on on the wings because there's a lot of, you know, pieces there. You maybe buy a midfielder to shore up your center back depth. All of a sudden, this Bayern team is, is a lot different, and Jonathan David could be the final piece. And I've always said he'd fit the Bayern system perfectly, just the way he roams and he moves and he operates as a striker, which, you know, isn't a natural number nine. It is going to be dropping in the pockets, dropping in the spaces, linking up with players. That's exactly how Robert Lewandowski played you know, for, for half a decade for Bayern. Of course, a lot of work would have to be done for David to become as prolific as Lewandowski, but I just think a fit-wise, that would help and it would open up space for for the talented wingers, the talented fullbacks like Davies to get forward. So it, it's one that would make a lot of sense for David and it would make a lot of sense for Bayern. Now, uh, Trooper Motang will take a little bit of offense to not mentioning him, but I, I, I can't get what you're I, saying. I, I, um, he's, I always forget about how just how good he is, so I do apologize for Trooper Motang. No, no, but I, I, I understand what you're saying because you had a striker like Robert Lewandowski who scored 30, 40 goals a season. He was prolific in every sense of the word. And to lose a player like that, and again, with no disrespect to Trooper Motang, he's had a decent season so far, but he's not going to probably be that type of striker that will get you those 20, 30 goals. So Bayern clearly need to look for another striker. And the way that Thomas Tuchel will play going forward, it looks like it's going to be that 4 2 3 one He's utilizing Sané. He's utilizing Kingsley Coman. I think having a, a player like Jonathan David could slide in naturally. And the thing that I like too, because in the past when we talked about clubs that we want to see Jonathan David go to, every single person I asked at the time said Inter Milan because of the system. The 3 5 2 system, he played that with Lille. He's showed that he can play very well off a of striker. But this season, Alex, he, he proved time in, time out. He's scored more goals than he ever has before. He's playing in a 4 2 3 1 system. It, it, he can show that he can be this lone striker. And I think that's a, a big step in his game where sometimes I wasn't overly sure that he could do it, especially at this level. And I think going to like an attack minded league like the Bundesliga, playing with wingers who can get distribution like Sane, Coman, Gnabry, I think David would have a lot of fun. Jamal Musiala playing under him as well. I just think it's a perfect little fit. It's just whether, again, that 65 million euro price tag is a little bit out there. And I think that's the reason that some of these other clubs outside the Premier League might have some trouble with the Jonathan David signing. But another club, now these are just some whispers out there that we're going to touch on as well. But another club out there that has been somewhat linked to him has been Arsenal. Uh, Mikel Arteta has done wonders with that club. They play, you know, 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1 type system. Uh, They brought in a player like Gabriel Jesus, which I assume would have eliminated any opportunity for David to come in. But... You know, his his name has been softly linked to Arsenal. What do you think about that type of transfer, Alex? Yeah, I mean, it would be an interesting one. It's just a move where there's a lot of options at the nine. And I, you know, do worry you're not going to see a big move for a big money move for a player who's going to come in and have to compete. You know, at least, of course, you want that competition. But it is a big ask, especially given the options. Like there's Gabriel Jesus, there's, you know, Eddie Nketiah. 
Flo Balagun, of course, could be around. You know, it sounds like they're planning to capitalize on his hot season and sell him, so that still opens up a space. But it is something where if you're dro- dropping 65-plus mil on a strike, you'd like a little more clarity in terms of him going in and being the guy. And just because of that, I don't think that's something Arsenal would do. I think it would be something that would be a good fit for David maybe. But, you know, Arsenal would be looking at that. Like, maybe if we're going to drop 65 mil, maybe there's some other areas of depth, like a center back or, you know, some of these other positions where they could use some more depth. So because of that, I don't see a full fit there. But maybe who knows if Jesus moves on or an Enketia, you know, moves on and it opens up that space where it's more, you know, just two of those guys competing against each other. That makes a lot more sense. But in terms of fit, Arteta certainly plays the style of, of soccer that David uh, would enjoy, but uh, there would have to be some some cleaning done, so to speak, at that number nine position for, for a guy like David to, to be free to go there. No, I, I definitely agree. Uh, I, I do think it would, it would be a nice fit if there was an opening. When I look at a club like Bayern we just talked about, there's a clear opening. I feel like he could work his way in there. Making this type of transfer for a young player who's in the form of his life can be a little challenging because you want to find a home where you're going to get the opportunity. Not that I don't back David to find it, but there are some other big clubs out there. And another one is AC Milan, who this one also kind of like Bayern makes a little bit of sense. A very attack style way of playing that 4-2-3-1. Lone striker. They got strikers like Ibra, Giroud. I mean, Origi, the, the first two obviously are getting a little bit older. Origi, I don't think, can quite cut it as that, as that striker for a club of this caliber. They're obviously up at time of recording, one nothing against Napoli in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. So this is an, a big club where if you bring in a player like Jonathan David in this type of system under Pioli, I, I think he could find some success in Serie A. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, and he's always been a natural fit for Serie A. And, you know, I think on a team like AC Milan, what's nice is that they've got a lot of talented wide players of course, you'd like that. You'd hope they'd keep Rafael Leal because his future seems very all over the map. But you know they can keep him, keep Ibrahim Diaz because he's obviously on loan. If they can get him back, there's a lot of good pieces around. Where something also with David, which you want to consider, is you'd want him to go be that nine and go score some goals. But you also want him to link up with his teammates. He's that's what he does. He drops deep. He can free them up. And you just again, if you can link up with the Leal and, and get some chemistry there, you like the fit. And especially look at the nine situation. Yeah, it's either a lot of old, you know, players were great. You know, Ibrahimovic, Giroud, great players. They've, you know, there's they are where they are at this age for a reason, but they're not going to be around forever. Certainly, at least you want to plan for for the post Giroud and Ibrahimovic era. And then a guy like Origi can get it done in spurts, but you know, maybe isn't what you want to be as your main guy. I know last summer they brought Charles de Cadillac and that maybe hasn't worked as much as they would have liked. He's kind of been playing on the wing. Something where you look at David, he could slot in naturally and maybe lead the, the, the sort of group there, lead the regeneration, the next, you know, generation of strikers at AC Milan. It makes a lot of sense in terms of fit and in terms of the, the style of play as well. Yeah, and Leipzig was also somewhat linked to David, but I think the price tag kind of ruled them out. So they're targeting actually Florian Balogun. Those two it kind of seems where one may end up, the other one potentially could go. A lot of a lot of clubs targeting those two. But the final player we will touch on today, and and there's uh, some whispers around these clubs. Uh, no massive sources have gone out there. I mean, Inter we've heard for a while, but it is Tejan Buchanan leaving Club Bruges. We have Inter Milan and Lazio. So two very different styles right now and two very different forms in Syria. Inter are somewhat falling apart despite having a very successful Champions League campaign. Lazio are sitting second place in the table, playing some fantastic attacking football under Maurizio Sarri. So out of the two, just taking a look, because it's either probably play for Inter, and Inzaghi probably honestly won't even be there next season, but if he is or if there's a similar type of style, maybe Antonio Conte comes back, you got the 3-5-2, and you'd expect Buchanan probably as a right wing back, or even Maurizio Sarri is Lazio, which again, you probably have a, a right back or right wing position. Out of the two for a move like Tejan, where, where would you like to see the interest happen this summer? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's funny because it's a bit of both. I'd love him to go play wing back for, you know, just in general. I think it would be a good position development for him to keep, you know, being that defensive sturdy self that he's kind of become, but also get forward more. But just in terms of fit, I think it would be nice to see him at, you know, under Sarri at Lazio. Just, you know, if he can play on the wing, great. If even at fullback, at least, you know, he's going to be very involved as a fullback. Going to have to get forward, going to have to do a lot. Uh, so it's something where it's a bit of both. <laughs> it's, you know, a bit of a boring answer, so to speak. But I guess I'd go Inter in that case just because there's a more of a natural fit there in terms of that wing back and Denzel Dumfries is gone. So they'd at least look at him and be like, okay, we want him here. We want him to be that sort of next up and coming 
you know, replacement that we can hopefully then sell on in the future the way they did with the Dumfries. So I'd say Inter just makes more sense, but the Lazio one does intrigue me given Sarri's pedigree and what he's been able to do. He, he you know, he obviously has mixed reviews because of his time in England, but one thing he's shown in England, one thing he's shown for his various clubs in Italy is that he's a fun coach. He's a, he's a coach that gets things, uh, you know, flowing. And I think it would be nice to see Buchanan learn there, but Inter just seems to make a lot more sense uh, at the moment. Yeah, I mean, and with me, just looking at Buchanan in his time at Club Rouge, he's been there for a little over a year and a half, and he's had four different managers. He's he's somehow found a way to be in the starting 11 most of the time under all four managers. So I'd like to see a manager in a club just, you know, stay. And I'm looking at this inter side, and I don't know who's going to be there. That's why it makes this a little bit difficult. But Alex, I do agree with you. I think a right wing back role in a club like Inter with the talent that they have, Dumfries going out, it could be a perfect fit. But I, I think it'll depend a little bit on the, the manager that comes in as well. Hopefully it's someone who can come in and, and establish and stay for a few seasons and give just a little little bit of, I guess, relaxation for Tejan because I I just find it unbelievable how many different managers the man has had right now and it's somewhat hard to develop. Where Sarri is building an awesome little project at Lazio. It's really impressive to see what he, he's done. It's just, again, I think he might, ha he might struggle to play as a winger in that side. Maybe Pedro ages out a little bit, but they do have some attacking talent there. Then... Got to probably play him in, in a right back role, which is, I don't think in that back four is where you're going to get the best out of him. So I think it's going to depend. We'll see if any other clubs obviously come out. I would, I've said many times, I think Buchanan would thrive in the Bundesliga. I don't know exactly what type of club, maybe like a Frankfurt, Gladbach, Wolfsburg. We'll have to see. But that is all today, guys, for our trio of Canadian transfers that could happen. It could be the biggest summer ever in Canadian national team transfer history. I think there's a good chance. Those are three unbelievable attacking talent so let us know down in the comments below if you think they will leave where, where you would like them to go and as always if you enjoy this episode be sure to drop a like drop us up and we'll see you soon cheers friends